All right, welcome back to the shop, everyone. This is the two-stroke channel, two-stroke turbo channel, I should say, if you are confused or happen to click on the wrong thumbnail. <laughs> Stick around, you might learn something today. So what are we doing? We're in the shop. We've got this Honda N600 on our lift. This is a 1970 Honda N600. It is a two-cylinder air-cooled car from the 70s. It has a synchro mesh transmission and a side draft carburetor from the factory. I think it's 40 millimeter. This car is a bit of a lab rat. It's experimental. I've installed an MSD, MSD, what do you call that? Capacitive discharge box, CDI, something like that. Um, just to the points, that seems to work really well. I have used a Harley-Davidson coil. I've used an Optima battery. So some upgrades, some modern upgrades to an older car. Also lowered the front, added some sticky Yokohama A008 tires, polyurethane bushings on the sway bar, polyurethane bushings, red ones there where the control arms meet, a true dual exhaust, you can see the dual pipes all the way to the muffler there. I should say it's a dual, not true dual, all the way out. True dual long, I guess a long tube header is what you call it, true dual. Uh, and that gave it quite a bit more torque. So we're doing some more experimenting. I've been working on the brakes. I've had an issue with the master cylinder leaking. And this car, you can see, is not equipped with the power brake unit. There's normally a power brake unit in this area. It has a diaphragm, a big vacuum diaphragm, and another master cylinder to help with the factory disc brakes. I think the assist is only on the factory disc brakes, if I'm not mistaken. The rear brakes don't do much. They're drums. What do we got? A cobweb here? Something. Um, but in keeping with the theme of experimenting, I happen to work on a lot of little microcars, and these little master cylinders made by Willwood, they're street rod master cylinders. This one, you can see the size of the bore is stamped right on that's 0.625, that's 5 eighths for us Americans. That's a small bore. The factory, how should I say this? So these come in different sizes. These are universal street rod master cylinders. This is a 5 eighths. Uh, you can get them down to a half inch. I think you can get a half inch, a 5 eighths, a 3 quarters, and maybe a 13 sixteenths. And the reason that I'm interested in converting this car to this master cylinder is one, it's short and small, but the bore is small, like not the physical diameter is small, because it's got to fit in that hole right there between a hot exhaust manifold and some heater ducting. And I think this will do it. The orientation is a little off. In other words, the flange here, I think is the same as long as the master cylinder is on its side. It's designed to be used like this. This is the inlet for the fluid, low pressure, and this is the outlet, high pressure. And you can see I've made adapters for both. My plan is to install it like this on the car in place of the factory master. Now that factory master is a three quarter and it works fine when you have the power brakes attached, but when you don't have the power brakes, the pedal is rock hard and it, I just don't like it. I want something with the smaller bore that gives me effectively more leverage and pressure in the braking system. So that's why I'm thinking about converting this. It's not an easy thing. I've got to make adapters, uh, metric to standard to English. I don't know what it is. Could be Whitworth for all I know. But I do have to adapt from a double, a double outlet reservoir to a single, and I've got to adapt my brake lines from a double to a single. And that may be a problem with disc brakes. I'm not sure if this has the disc brake pressure valve in it. It probably doesn't. I want to try it. I want to see if it's better than what that is. Um, that one works fine, um, other than it leaked and it took off all my paint and it drove me crazy. Um, and I just want to bring it up, this car, into the modern age. I'd really like to take this car to an autocross. Uh, that's my goal. And I need some brakes that really are sharp and refined and that work really well and I'm hoping this will help. So 
stick around and we're going to adapt this master cylinder to this car and see if we can make it all work. Okay, while I was disconnecting lines and working on doing this master cylinder swap, I thought I should explain a little bit more. I'm not looking for a soft brake pedal. I'm looking for an effective brake pedal. And what I mean by that is I just don't want something that's rock hard that takes two feet to step on on a little car like this. I want something that works well. And by reducing the bore diameter of your master cylinder, you can actually create somewhat like effective power brakes having manual brakes. This is another little tip and trick that I did, but I'm not sure it's working well. Let's see if I can get your camera in here. Okay, see up in here? See, eh, you can see that. See those, that's where the, the brake pedal rod goes, and you see I've drilled three holes. That fork is in the middle hole, and I did that to add more leverage to the pedal to get more of a fulcrum point to make the brake pedal easier to push. And that works, but that side loads the master cylinder and can make the rear seal leak. So my plan is, is to put this back into the correct position hole, which is the low one, and I'll have a straight angle of the rod, and I won't side load my master cylinder, and it will last a long time. And hopefully with the smaller bore master cylinder, I will effectively have given myself power brakes with all, without all the hassle of installing power brakes. Does that make sense? We're going to try it out. So that's my, that's my goal, is to make the brake pedal easier, but make it more effective. Not softer, but just easier to press. Kind of like adding power brakes, but without the assist hardware. All right, so we're back to working on our little Honda N600 with the master cylinder swap to a Willwood. You can see we got it bolted in. We got our lines are kind of loopy there for the pressure lines. Was able to plug off one of the nipples for the non-pressure, just the brake fluid reservoir. And it took me a while to find some 3 8 brake fluid resistant hose, but I got that in and I got the master was completely dry i didn't bench bleed it i was able to bleed on the car i used my trusty mighty vac stella what do you what do you think what do you, what do you think girl am i on the camera again you camera shy dog okay yeah people want to say hi to you you know little fuzzy butt came in to say hi uh so we've got the rod back in the inside of the car it seems like it has the correct amount of clearance this is completely experimental. Uh, again, this is a single outlet master cylinder converted from a double. This is a manual brake cylinder that is smaller bore, which should give me better assist. Because I, I took out the power, power brakes. They were problematic. Uh, and we're going to see. I don't know how it's going to react with the disc brakes. I don't know anything, really, until we try this. But I was able to get this caliper bled so I'm gonna go around the car and um, bleed the rest and we'll see what we got okay we just got the passenger side brake caliper bled and I thought why don't I give the YouTube world some tips so I'm gonna give you some tips this is 3 8 brake fluid resistant hose it costs 60 cents per inch it's pretty expensive stuff it's 3 8 and it's brake fluid resistant you cannot use transmission fluid hose you cannot use rubber fuel line. You must use brake fluid resistant hose when you're routing a remote reservoir like that. Also, I am a one-man shop, one-man operation. I self-bleed, one-man bleed breaks all the time. There's a couple of key things, and you should listen carefully. The hose always has to go up. It needs to fit tight on the bleeder. And it has to go up. If it goes down, you'll never get them bled. Air rises. That's tip number two. Tip number three is I installed stainless steel brake hoses on this car a long time ago. And that's some of the best investment you can ever do. I can't really see them. Turn my light on here. Let's see if I can turn my light on. Oh, there we go. Turn my light on and you can see this nice... Uh, it's actually starting to pull out there a little bit. It's stainless steel hose. I think the inside is 1 8 or something, but... 
it makes a big difference in pedal firmness. And again, what I'm looking for is not a rock hard pedal. I don't want that. I want a firm high pedal that has good assist. That's the whole purpose of this conversion. Okay, we got our little N600 back on the ground. Brakes are all bled, pedal feels firm, and oh, what do we have here? We got a stunt driver. You gonna do some donuts, some cookies, some birdies? Oh, maybe some squirrels. You wanna hoon around? Okay, let's drive this thing. All right, we got a lot of cobwebs in here. This car's been sitting around a little bit. I'm gonna wash it down so you can actually see out the windshield. It's very dirty. Very dirty, Stella. Stella? What are you doing? Oh, there you are. Let's clean the windows. Okay, the proof is in the pudding. The Honda's windows are clean. New brakes are on. Just a new master cylinder conversion. Got my puppy dog in there. Maybe we can take it for a drive. The pedal already feels nice. I hope that uh, there's no issues with the power brake or the disc brakes, rather. Starts right up, brake off. Roll this window down. Get a little fresh air in here. Still, you want some fresh air? There. You can sniff outside. Okay, so dash mounted shifter. Let's see how this works. Ooh. Brake pedal feels good already. As long as no hoses blow, I think we're doing good. I don't know if I got the brakes wet or not. Seems like the pedal kind of went down a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go on a high-speed run. You got your seatbelt on? Probably not. by far the best they've ever worked. A little bit of pedal effort, but not bad. That's nice. That's really good. I'm very happy. Let's do a U-turn here and jam on the brakes once more. You ready, Stella? Didn't skid a tire. Stopped straight and true though. That's good. That's really good. It might wear in a little bit too. Nice. Got the tires to lock up there, Stella. You almost went through the windshield. I need a seat belt for you. Check the brake fluid, make sure there's no leaks. And I think we're good. Come on. This little car has been an experiment. One more thing has been experimented on. That's the Wheelwood master cylinder brake conversion. I'll let you know in a few days how that's working out. So far, it seems to be doing just good. Just great, perfect, the best. Love this little car. Can't wait to rip it around. I think once the rust gets off the rotors and the brakes kind of bed in a little bit, it will become even better. The old master cylinder didn't have enough oomph to really stop the car. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope I, helped, hope I helped you out if you had any issues, qualms, worries, or maybe started a new trend on converting brakes for old Hondas. Let me know in the comments. Thanks. Bye.